Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of our La Liga career mode. We're returning today with what could be the final episode of the save as we face AC Milan in the Champions League final. Of course, in the previous episode, we rounded off the league season where we also won La Liga. So going for a Champions League and La Liga double, of course, lost in the Copa del Rey final to Real Madrid a few episodes ago. And just quickly, we will have a look at all of the leagues um, a little bit later on after the final. But Milan, well, not the greatest of seasons for them domestically. Obviously, can't check the... Uh, Coppa Italia standings but third in the league so okay that gives me a little bit more confidence heading into this nothing else more to say so let's just dive straight in it is time for the big one at Champions League finals Girona looking to win it for the first time against the Italians vamos Girona right here we go then Champions League final time and I'm not too sure where it came from, but Sonse is actually suspended for this. Now, he definitely didn't get sent off in the semi. Um, I haven't checked it, but I'm, I'm pretty confident that he did get booked. But I don't know why he's suspended for it. So, no Sonse. Fabian Ruiz comes in. And, I mean, I'm still, I'm still pretty happy with Ruiz. And, oh, look at that. 150th game in charge as well. So, hoping to make it a memorable one where we'll be lifting the Champions League trophy. Just realising now as well that the game's actually being played at the San Siro. So, technically a home game for Milan. It does happen. Chelsea beat Bayern Munich in, uh, in, in the Allianz Stadium. One that I remember very fondly back in 2012. Beat them on home soil. On a penalty shootout nonetheless as well. And Artem Dovbik says, we're going to do the same here. Milan trail inside 20 minutes in their home stadium in the Champions League final. Come on. Kuto into Luis. Now Zigankov. We've been good so far in these opening 20, 25 minutes. Across to Savio. Oh, what a save by Mike. We were really, really poor at the end of last episode in that final run. And yes, we knew the league season was pretty much wrapped up. But our form went completely out the window. And I was nervous heading into this Champions League final. But so far, we have turned up here. Liao comes away down the left. First, we're really seeing of him. Liao swings the cross in. It's dangerous. Oh, oh my God. Get it out. Get rid of it. Huge block at the back post. And then a scramble. And that is why we need to capitalise whilst we're on top. At the break, we lead by one, but Milan, no means out of this. Leao, this time runs into Jan Kuto. Does poke it through to his captain. Nice little flick. And look at the space for Savio out wide. Savio dinked in for Ruiz. Oh, what a header! Fabian Ruiz in today for the suspended Sonse. And it was Sonse's goals who got us to the final. And Fabian Ruiz may have just won it for Girona. What a fantastic header from the Spaniard. Dinked in by Savio. And he just guides it into that far corner. Mike nowhere near it. Girona on their way to winning the Champions League. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not done and dusted just yet. Just over 20 to play. If Milan get the next goal, then it's definitely not over. But... We're, we're close. Here's Di Catala. Gets away from Alex Garcia. Di Catala shoots and Yulan gets across to it. 15 minutes to play. They can start engraving the G on the trophy. No, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Dangerous ball, but Yulan claims that's exactly what we needed. And Milan have not really threatened us too much today. Five to play here. We're, we're basically there now. Tijani Reinders through to Lukaku. Oh, brilliant back heel. And Pulisic. And still Christian Pulisic off the post. But that is pretty much going to do it. Last chance for AC Milan. And the American hits it off the woodwork. But you can stay with me for the final few moments here. Because that is going to do it. Girona are going to be crowned Champions League winners. Still with playing. Come on, ref. 
There we go. Girona, Champions League winners in just three seasons. We said when we took over, after a fantastic season in real life where they managed to qualify for the Champions League, we knew that the team already had some great potential, some great quality. We've invested in the areas we thought we were weak, but we've kept the, the core of the team. Dovbik, Alex Garcia, Zigankov. Yes, we've brought players in like Mika, Mosquera, Yulin. And we brought the, the likes of Kuto and Savio back who were here in the first season. But the groundwork was already there for this Girona team. We just had to develop it and build on it. And that's exactly what we've done. Won the, our first two trophies for the club last year, winning a domestic double. And now we've got our hands on Europe's elite. Alex Garcia, the skipper, will lift the trophy for Girona. And for the first time in the club's history, we have won the Champions League. Well, you've got to remember as well that we've done that in AC Milan's backyard, winning the Champions League in their, in their own ground. What a performance from Girona. As we have one final look through the squad here. And what a squad it is that we've built. As I say, we've kind of kept the core of the team and just developed it over time. The, the only thing we could really improve on go going forward is a little bit more quality in depth. If we were going to continue for another season, maybe the likes of Suslov, Zabani, Banabe, maybe we could improve on them. But I mean, the starting 11, I mean, if we put Miguel Gutierrez in, if we put Sonse back in, who had a weird suspension for that game, th there's no real weak spot in this team. Again, I've kind of, I've rotated between Martinez, Porro and Jan Kuta, who, who I said back in, I think season one or season two, I do see him as the long-term um, successor for Martinez in, in that right back position because he was just fantastic for us but I mean what a side we have built here we've developed we've brought in some key players as well and yeah I mean what a way to end the save winning Girona their first ever Champions League so what we'll do to wrap up the episode and the series as a whole is take a look around Europe take a look around the other leagues and uh, we'll also have a final sort of squad roundup as we go through our team one final time. But as we know, the La Liga title was won um, quite a few weeks ago. We pipped Atleti, Real and Barca to the title for the second year in a row. We did also win the Super Copa. So if you want to class it as a treble, then I guess you could. But... Yeah, we, did, we didn't win the Copa del Rey, lost that in the final to 10-man Real Madrid. So I'm calling it a league and European double as we lost out on the Copa del Rey. Uh, Super Cup was won by Napoli, not really too fussed about that. Champions League, of course, as you can see, Girona beating Milan by two goals to nil. And as for the Europa League and the Conference League, well, the Europa League was won once again by Roma. No Jose Mourinho anymore, but winning it on penalties against Sporting Lisbon. And the Conference League was won by Newcastle, beating Fiorentina by three goals to nil in the final. And as for the other leagues, well, Liverpool won the Premier League, pipping Manchester City to the title. Obviously, we knocked Liverpool out of the Champions League this season and a poor season for Manchester United down in eighth place. Ligue 1 was won by another team we knocked out of Europe this season, Paris Saint-Germain winning it by three points ahead of AS Monaco. The Bundesliga this year, well it was won by Xavi Alonso's Leverkusen side, pipping Bayern Munich by just a single point to win the Bundesliga. As we know, Milan finished third in the Serie A, but it was Juventus, our, our team that we used back in our, our first career mode save of FC24. They managed to win the Serie A title, clear of Inter by five points. The Eredivisie was won by Ajax, no real shocks there. It's generally Ajax or PSV in my saves. The Liga Portugal, unfortunately, no, no such luck for Braga. We know they've got a bit of a record of, of winning it in my saves, but no such luck. It was Porto winning the Liga Portugal. 
As for the Spanish Segunda division, it was Rayo Vallecano bouncing right back up to the top flight in first place. Uh, Huesca finished in second, and the playoffs will be contested between Granada, Las Palmas, Ibar, and Elche. And finally, we'll end on the Turkish Super League as Galatasaray beat their rivals Fenerbahce to the title pretty comfortably in the end by 12 points. So what we'll do to finish off the series is run through the squad one final time, look at the players and their stats for this season. Starting with our goalkeepers, Yassin was of course brought in back from Saudi Arabia in the summer. We had to give him that crucial squad status, so he did submit a transfer request halfway through the campaign, but I, I, I knew he was just going to be back up to Yulin who's grown uh, now a rating ahead of him. But Yassin, four clean sheets in 12. He did play in our six group stage games in the Champions League. Most of our games in the Copa del Rey and the Super Cup as well. But of course, it was Ulam who's now surpassed him. 23 clean sheets in 38. I wasn't able to equal or better the La Liga clean sheet record, which is currently 26. And it's 23 two years in a row for Ulam. I, I don't think I'll ever beat that record in a save uh, we had three young keepers out on loan tony who was here from the start rafael was at celta vigo grown to and lucas castro who looked like a really solid keeper at just 18 grown to seven up to 72 uh, Pedrosa, another really solid season for him, grown up to 80 overall. And with Miguel Gutierrez being injured quite a lot again this season, he's grown one to 86. We had to um, we had to put our faith in Pedrosa. Played 36 games this season, and he he was really really solid when Miguel went down. Didn't offer a huge amount going forward. Did not two assists which is the same as Miguel Gutierrez. But I, I had no problem bringing Pedrosa in when Miguel went down with the injury. Our game time was split quite evenly between our centre-backs. Uh, Krejci, who was signed in the summer, fantastic signing. Six goals for the big Czech Republic defender, grown three ratings up to 83. And as a squad centre-back, he was perfect, stepping in for Mika, whenever we needed to give him a rest. Uh, Zabani didn't play a huge amount, had a, another three-month injury during the kind of busy period of the season, so just 13 appearances for him. Um, but it was Mosquera and Mika who was our main centre-back partnership, now up to 87 and 86 overall, respectively, and they were both fantastic. Uh, three goals and one assist for Mosquera with 19 clean sheets in 32. And Mika on that left side is centre-back partner. Two goals for him as well, both coming against Atletico Madrid. At right back, we had some really, really solid options. And you can see I split the game time really evenly between the three. 33, 34 and 35 appearances respectively. Martinez and Kuto both with just the two assists, but Pedro Porro doubled that with four returns. And yeah, as I say, they, they all kind of had their injury issues this season, particularly Porro and Kuto, but these three options of right back were absolutely superb. Couldn't have asked for better. Uh, Jarrell Hato in the heart of midfield, grown four ratings again this season. Some great growth on the youngster, up to 82 overall. 36 appearances, he made a lot of them from the bench. Uh, just the three assists, but of course he was more there as an anchor man to sit in front of our defence if there was a game we knew that we had to defend a little, little bit more than usual. So yeah, Jarrell Hato was a fantastic, fantastic signing for us. Could play in numerous positions as well, and I loved whenever he played. Uh, Thomas Suslov, not the greatest of seasons for him. I was hoping he might kick on a bit, but um, yeah, 27 appearances, just the two goals and two assists. He is one of the players that if we were going for another season, we'd probably look to sell and bring in a better quality replacement on that left-hand side. But as backup to Savio, he, he did a decent job. Um, of course, the Brazilian signed on a permanent at the summer transfer window last year. Five goals and seven assists for him. Not the greatest of returns in 48 games, but I always say when you've got a front three, there's always one guy that sort of doesn't perform as well as the other two. Savio was that guy, unfortunately. 
But um, still a solid season from the Brazilian. And he did score the winner in our Champions League semi-final against PSG. Again, the game time between our central midfielders was really spread out. You can see Fabian Ruiz, who did lose his place to Sonse, ended up playing 42 games in all competitions. Three goals and three assists. And as a senior in this team, he was just so, so good. He's cultured. He's a fantastic passer of the ball and he did score the dagger in that Champions League final. What a signing Fabian Ruiz turned out to be. Uh, the captain Alex Garcia, unfortunately I didn't get him to 90 overall. I was hoping at some point throughout the season he would jump up to 90. I mean he's almost there. If we simmed a few weeks in the calendar he might get there. But um, yeah, we, we couldn't get him to 90. Would have been the first player to 90 overall. 45 games played this season. Just the one goal, but 33 assists. I imagine a lot of them did come from the corners into the big man, Dovbik. But yeah, the captain, our leader, Alex Garcia, a Girona legend. Uh, Douglas Luiz, the big man, Dougie, in the heart of that midfield. Played in the slightly deeper position. Didn't get quite as many goals this season with just two on the board. But still eight assists, 24 clean sheets in all competitions. And he was just fantastic a breaking play up setting us on the counter attacks and uh, yet yeah, another fantastic signing back at the beginning of season two as for this man Sonse brought in this summer as the kind of the final piece of the jigsaw and he did suffer quite a lot with injuries just the 25 appearances but eight goals and five assists in 25 is a fantastic return of course scored those two big goals in the Champions League semi-final against Paris Saint-Germain that set us on our way to the final and I think if he'd stayed injury free he would have been even better for us than he was in those 25 appearances. Uh, Nicolas Capel my utility man every team needs one and the argentine was fantastic i can play this guy absolutely anywhere and he puts in a shift 43 appearances two goals and four assists and, and he was a key part of the backup brigade as well the utility man we can literally play him anywhere i loved having this guy in the squad uh, Adrian Bernabe, again, decent squad player to have. 32 appearances for him, so played a decent amount. No goals, but four assists. And yet, yeah, again, just in that backup team, when we needed to rest players after playing those Champions League games, he, he was really important to have him as an option to come in in that central midfield role. Uh, as for Viktor Zigankov, a bit of a strange season. He never quite hit the heights that he did in season one. Again, started the campaign off really slow. And then a few episodes ago, just absolutely set the world alight. Went on a fantastic run. He did pop up with 10 goals and 12 assists throughout the course of the campaign. And he was always a threat down that right-hand side. But I always feel that his numbers maybe could have been better. I think in season one, he hit like over 20 goals or something and he never quite managed to establish that form but Viktor Zigankov our vice captain a very very solid season now on that right hand side and as for the kid Santiago Montoya gutted he had a bit of an injury hit season but he did still feature 31 times still has that potential to be special tag but we're never gonna quite get him there still three goals and three assists in his breakout season a lot of game time off the bench as well but I really like the kid I, I think he had such a high ceiling and if we were playing on for another couple of years I, I think this kid definitely would have reached the high 80s by next season as for our strikers well we'll start at the bottom with Matteo Joseph he knew he was third choice and he, he only really got garbage minutes 16 appearances but most of them probably coming off the bench just the one goal and one assist but he is a decent third choice behind Levi Garcia and the main man Dovbik. And speaking of Levi, 20 goals and four assists for the big man. In 39 appearances, that is a fantastic return. He's averaged a goal every, well, better than a goal every other game, which is a fantastic return for someone who, who a lot of his minutes came off the bench and he was, he was leader of the backup team, Mr. Reliable. I mean, this guy, I could not have asked for a better backup for Artem Dovbik. And look at those numbers. 
46 goals and 5 assists for the big Ukrainian. We got him to 40 in La Liga this season. First player I've had do it in FC 24. And he joins an illustrious club of players to score 40 league goals in a European top 5 league. Joining Lois Openda, who did it for me with RC Lons in the Glory Hunter, and Victor Osimen, who also did it in that same save when we were at Chelsea. But yeah, that is a full run through of the squad. And as I say, what a team that we developed here in Girona. After spending three seasons in Spain and a few in Turin at the end of our last career mode as well, I think it's maybe time to head back to our native England in our next save. Yes, guys, we will be kicking off the new series very, very soon. I'm really super excited for it. And it will be our last project of FC24 before the new game comes out. So guys, keep an eye out. It will be hitting the channel very 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 soon but thank you so so much for all the support on this save we've had so many memorable moments and I, yeah i just want to say thank you so much because it's been so much fun this save i'll catch you for the new series very soon guys you won't want to miss it and peace